I remember being in a meeting with a, with a group of achievers, achieve colleagues, catching myself saying, well, once we get through this crazy period and things settle down again, you ever catch yourself in one of those conversations? And once we get this new process in place or get that new structure built or a new program is in place, whatever it may be, and things settle down, do they ever settle down? No, exactly. And that's where the light bulb went on for me that day. And I, I kind of interrupted myself and said, gee, it seems like I've been saying that an awful lot lately. I think maybe what we've got to get our head around, or at least what I've got to get my head around, is that this crazy period is normal, is life that uh, the speed of change is not likely to be slowing down anytime soon. And so not long after that, I came across uh, a comment from one of my favorite authors and researchers and writers, Warren Bennis, who sadly just passed away last summer. Uh, but he left quite a legacy of dozens and dozens of books and lots of insights and research and leadership. He said some very nice things about one of my books, The Leader's Digest, so clearly the man's brilliant. And uh, and I, I remember him ever more fondly. But uh, way back when, in those days, as I mentioned, just a couple of weeks later, I saw this comment of his. He said, I can't recall a period of time that was as volatile, complex, ambiguous, tumultuous. And then he quoted one senior executive of the day of saying, if you're not confused, you don't know what's going on. How many people here know what's going on? There's probably a few of us because I, I know what's going on. Jean Kerr was an American playwright who once said something similar years ago. She said, if you can keep your head when everybody else around you is losing theirs, it's just possible you haven't grasped the situation. <laughs> it's one of the possibilities. So let's, uh, let's lay down one of the fundamental pieces that I think is really critical to this whole conversation we're going to have. Because I'm going to use the word leadership quite a lot. And I'm going to talk about leading. And where I'm coming from predominantly here is this idea that leadership is an action, not a position. That some people are in leadership roles or positions, and they may or may not be leaders. They might be administrators, they might be bosses, they might be uh, snoopervisors, but they aren't necessarily <laughs> leaders, as the way we're talking about leadership. Uh, and so on the other hand, I'm sure you would agree, and I'm sure in this room, there are a lot of people who may not be in formal leadership roles who are providing strong leadership. So the way we tend to think about leadership is it's around influencing, connecting, changing, delivering results, and those are just some of the words we start to bring together when we're talking about leading leadership and leading others. But many of us tend to be most comfortable in the middle here when there's big changes happening, especially negative changes, setbacks, problems, issues, something that really has hit us between the eyes or caused a big problem for us. It, it's sometimes more comfortable to kind of sit back and wait and see how this is going to play out. What exactly is going to happen here? Should I be worried about this or should I not? And so we tend to be fairly comfortable there. If we're on the positive side, if we're above this, this line here, then we might be hopeful. Well, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. I'm, I'm hoping that this will turn out well. I'm going to let it see where it goes. And I might be a bit skeptical, and that's OK, but I'm at least hopeful. The dangerous part is sliding down into, oh, here we go again. Every time we turn around, got to deal with more of this kind of crap. Just Isn't it just the way it always goes? Isn't that exactly what I expect from them? And we start sliding down and become like poor old General Sedgwick, who's a casualty of the US Civil War. He's buried at Arlington Cemetery. These were his last words. They couldn't hit an elephant from this dist. <laughs> that was it for General Sedgwick. And in fact, that story has become so legendary within the US military that at West Point Academy, this is his statue. And they, the story is told there to remind leaders of how easy it is to become too sure of ourselves, too cynical, and to slide into this kind of trap. So we can look at as kind of a spectrum here with at the very top end would be most positive, at the very bottom end would be most negative, and we, I draw a set of steps to say that if we come back to the idea that leadership is an action, not a position, it's what we do, not who we are, or the role that we're in, 
then the leadership action is climbing, often defying a bit of gravity, climbing against gravity, up to higher levels of leadership. So leading at the very extreme, we're using thinking or mindsets like this. Well, how can we capitalize the lemons and the lemonade idea? How can we take this negative situation and really use it as fuel or energy to bring about the change we need to bring about? So that's at the very extreme, higher end. Maybe part way down there, we might be saying things like, well, how can we at least overcome or work around or, or deal with this problem? At the other extreme is we're sliding dangerously down and I drew this as this sort of slippery slope that all of a sudden, as we slide down that slope, we can really drop off quickly. And as I was struggling with how to rename, I was using, in the book that you have, I'd used the term navigator, survivor, victim. And it started to be, feel to me a little bit like that was too much labels being put on people rather than on how we think. So as I was struggling here, I loved the word ultimately wallowing. I think that is a really rich word that has a lot of connotations to it. One is that we can wallow in this sense of blame and it's everybody else's fault. Or I just know they're up to two o'clock last night trying to figure out how to make our lives miserable. Right? They're just out to get us. And so we can end up, if we're not careful, of course, uh, spending way too much time. Uh, we talked about leadership, but we can end up here where we're moving around in the mire and the muck. Now this, I think, is a really interesting definition. Or uh, from uh, The Simpsons, with uh, Smithers out of the picture, I was free to wallow in my own crapulence. <laughs> so we can really end up in a pretty unclean kind of position or place. And we can end up in spending way too much time in Pity City. Oh, this can be a healthy place to visit. Would you agree that every once in a while we need to take a little venting visit, a little healthy visit to maybe to Pity City? It's a dangerous place to live. Now, years ago I was in Calgary. We were talking about being on the bitter bus and being in Pity City. And in fact, somebody in the group said, well, that's the BMW bus. That's the bitch, moan, and wine bus. And <laughs> I guess that's a little more upscale bus. But the um, one of the other women in the group said, my husband is the mayor of Pity City. <laughs> he not only lives there, he's running the place. <laughs> so in Pity City, we can end up getting there down Helpless Highway, past Winding Way, Dead End Drive, Pessimism Place, where uh, there's no hope, the situation is hopeless. Was it long? one of the famous penis characters, I think, said, I feel better now that I've given up all hope. Right? <laughs> So it's a very hopeless kind of spot to be. There's no way. They'll never go for it. We tried that once. Forget about it. It did end. Just give up and don't even bother. So again, it can be a, a healthy place to visit occasionally. It can be a very, very deadly place to live. Well, I'll leave you with one last thought. I was raised on a dairy farm near Newton, Ontario. There's a hot spot. Probably a few people here don't know where that is. It's uh, northwest of Kitchener-Waterloo, where I live now, about 25 miles or so. And years ago, I came across a, a comment from Albert Hubbard, who's an American writer, researcher, publisher. I think over 100 years ago, he was, he was alive. And he made this comment that resonated with me about dairy farming, but even more importantly, I think, about leading, following, or wallowing and the choices that we have. He said, people who want milk should not seat themselves on a stool in the middle of the field in the hope that a cow will back up to them. <laughs> it's pretty good dairy farming advice. Not going to milk too many cows that way, but it certainly is, I think, critical to leading and making things happen.